Hello. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I would like to, to, to speak today about uh, uh, diagnostics, and when I say diagnostics, I mean not only health-related diagnostics, but also environmental monitoring. So, nowadays we have a lot of issues, a lot of challenges. In fact, uh, uh, aging of populations, uh, just uh, to consider that by 2050, two billion of people will be uh, uh, more than 60 years old. Chronic diseases, seven of the top 10 causes of death, uh, uh, spending on health with a lot of uh, uh, 6.5 trillions. Pandemics, we have been living uh, uh, since more than two years uh, COVID. Uh, but also environment, a lot of contamination, chemical, biological contaminations. And considering all these, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have uh, conventional laboratories that are working fine. Uh, these are very good because uh, they have uh, uh, very good sensitivity, they have information capability, they are suitable also for basic research in addition to giving uh, uh, service to, to, to the people. But also they have problems related to the cost, they have problems related to the time, so they are time consuming. They are related to large equipments, as you probably know, and also they request uh, specialized users and facilities, and also sometimes they have low throughput for what they are requested. This is why we are very much interested to work and to offer the so-called point-of-care devices and this, this context biosensors. But for these biosensors, for these devices to be uh, uh, useful as point of care, they should be, we say, uh, reassured. And this means that they should be able to give response in real time, uh, should be connected with uh, an easy sampling mode, should be affordable, sensitive, specific, user-friendly, rapid and robust, equipment-free, and also delivered to those who need it. Think just about uh, uh, COVID tests. Uh, so we had a, a lot of need about these kind of devices, and all these devices should fulfill this kind of these requisites. So otherwise, uh, shouldn't be possible to afford uh, uh, our need for these uh, uh, circumstances. So this is why we are focused in a kind of nanobiosensors that are using sustainable platforms like paper, plastics. We are using printing technologies that are fast, uh, cost-efficient, and we are trying to integrate nanomaterials uh, uh, within these platforms. Uh, and of course, uh, trying to integrate because you need to do some electronics, you need to connect, and we are also working in uh, a smartphone-related connections with these uh, devices in our laboratory at Qatar Institute of Nanoscience and Nanotechnology in Beaterra, just uh, uh, 20 minutes uh, by car from here. So, and the idea behind all what we are doing is uh, why not to move from what we have nowadays, uh, centralized uh, fabrication of these kind of devices uh, to we call ubiquitous fabrication. So instead of uh, distributing these devices to be used as point of care, why not to distribute the technology? But this means you need to have uh, a simple technology like printers, fast uh, patterning, uh, stamping, so we can address, for example, challenges like, for example, the pandemics, you know, uh, uh, different kind of uh, virus, uh, you need uh, very fast to address this need, so everywhere uh, in different countries, they should be, people should be able to fabricate very fast and address the challenges. So this is why we are working with this kind of devices, being lateral flow, one of them, based on paper, but also other devices that are really simple, based on just printing, very fast printing, being an alternative to other devices. So paper is one of them, and we had also we heard another interesting talk about the advantages in our field. It's very interesting because uh, paper is sustainable, is biodegradable, it's very easy to do even microfluidics. You have like a zero energy device, so liquid can run by capillary forces, but also we can integrate nanomaterials. And in fact, what we are doing is putting nanoparticles, putting different other biological uh, materials, converting a piece of paper to a sensor, and this is really amazing. 
this is just an example from uh, the devices we are developing, and this is based on graphene taking advantages of this material, using this uh, as a simple device uh, to control the breath uh, that may be with interest for future application in uh, uh, diagnostics in addition to other uh, fields, giving a very fast response, uh, but as you can see, is very easy to use uh, and of course uh, uh, very easy to be produced uh, anywhere in the world. So the devices we are producing we call these uh, uh, plug, print, and play nanobiosensors. We just need to uh, design the device, the, the configuration, and then load the, the, the printer with the right uh, uh, inks, with uh, uh, nanoparticles, uh, uh, connect, uh, put some receptors. In our case, we may put antibodies, DNA, aftamers, uh, and then uh, uh, just uh, operate, uh, connect it through a smartphone. And this is just one application we did uh, in relation to a biomarker for health disease. So it's really very, very fast, as you can see. You print as you, you, you print in your office uh, as a, with a print, office printer. So it's really uh, very, very interesting, and you see also microfluid dicks occurring there. So, you may have, and probably so, yesterday was a presentation in a poster by one of my uh, PhD students and collaborators, uh, Massimo and Giulio, who probably are here, and you could see how simple is this technology, so how we make this technology able to be offered in any place in the world uh, and to, 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 to uh, solve uh, problems related to any kind of diagnostics. Uh, and of course, we are move, moving forward, doing much more science and technology, putting always in these simple platforms, uh, uh, DNA nanotechnology, for example, to detect antibodies, but also to detect uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, spike protein with interest for uh, pandemics that uh, we have been working uh, since uh, the beginning. Uh, this is another example of our devices, uh, uh, still uh, uh, sustainable devices uh, we are wishing to offer, uh, and in this case as a wearable. So instead of having a standalone sensor, you have it already on in your body, and this can be used, for example, in this case for uh, copper detection with interest for some uh, diagnostics. Uh, and of course, these devices are useful also for environmental monitoring, and this is another example where our devices, in collaboration with our partners in Europe, were integrated in a boat, uh, going around and trying to detect uh, uh, co uh, accidental contamination of heavy metals, and of course, uh, uh, sending the, the messages, the, 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 the information to the end users, uh, uh, so as to control uh, uh, the contamination. Uh, of course, we need to put more efforts, and in fact, this technology is quite amazing, but still, we are trying to integrate in these uh, uh, paper-based sensors more nanotechnology, more nanomaterials, uh, so as to develop the next generation of these uh, sustainable, simple platforms with interest uh, for diagnostics, uh, addressing issues related to the sensitivity, issues related to multiplexing, etc., that are very important for real scenarios either in clinical analysis, but also environmental monitoring. And of course, uh, to do that, uh, we need also to collaborate, and this is just uh, a, 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 a recent collaboration. We are working together with colleagues at San Juan, uh, Hospital San Juan de Deo here in Barcelona, and also our colleagues in Olomouc, uh, Czech Republic, uh, putting together efforts and integrating more nanotechnology, uh, graphene-related materials to these paper-based sensors, uh, very simple in this case, with interest for uh, cancer-related uh, diagnostics and therapy. Of course, uh, to do this, uh, uh, to make these devices offered for uh, such kind of applications uh, that we call it uh, democratization of uh, diagnostics uh, is something uh, fantastic, but uh, you need, of course, uh, 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 to develop furthermore uh, new materials, to explore new materials, but also uh, materials with uh, uh, cost uh, uh, efficiency, but also uh, devices with uh, uh, portability, uh, sensitivity analysis, for reproducibility is very, very important. And of course, sometimes you need this to have equipment free. And to do this, uh, you need also to uh, 
uh, transfer your, 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 your expertise. Uh, so boosting the research capabilities of other countries is uh, an important issue related with uh, this democratization of diagnostics. This is why uh, our institute, in collaboration with the uh, Czech Republic, uh, uh, win, uh, won uh, uh, an important European project, so a twinning project uh, in which uh, we are now trying to boost the, the research capabilities of uh, uh, University of Tirana in Albania. So we are trying to combine our expertise in sensors, expertise of oleomuk in graphene, and to try to help uh, uh, colleagues in uh, Tirana, Albania, uh, to develop a new generation of sensors with interest for environmental monitoring, etc. So this is all I wanted to say, and of course to do that we have a lot of uh, uh, we have sponsors, we have uh, uh, support by our uh, institutions all over the world, and overall I would like to thank my collaborators. Uh, uh, so some of them are, are missing, uh, but uh, those who are doing all this amazing work, this is just a, a part of these works. Uh, but we are convinced that uh, these kind of devices are going to be very very interesting in the future, and overall. Uh, in what I, we expect and we believe to democratize uh, the diagnostics uh, uh, nowadays uh, so as to have uh, cost-efficient devices to address issues, important issues with our health and also our environment. Thank you very much. Thank you.